Now, Mev de Burka joins us to uh, offer some analysis on the Republic of Ireland's 1 0 defeat at the hands of the USA last night. Maeve, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Not too bad now. How are you doing? What did you make of this performance? Yeah, it was a very positive performance, I think, overall. Um, you know, obviously, it was disappointed, I suppose, maybe not to, to score. Maybe we're hoping for too much against the world champions, like I said. But um, it was overall, I thought, um, it was a good performance. Um the goal was, I suppose, unfortunate for Courtney in that um, it would, I suppose, it'll go down as a, a goalkeeping error, really, because um, the goal came um, just just inside, um, just before half time from Alana Cook. She was crossing the ball in after um, after a corner initially from the US. So, um, from that point of view, I suppose it's a little bit disappointing, but overall, I think um, a lot of positives to take. You can be glass half full, you can be glass half empty about a performance like this. Glass half empty, just for a minute, is that we didn't create enough chances over the two games to actually score against the USA, and that has been a big problem for us. So are you seeing at least any signs of progress in terms of creating good quality chances? Yeah, I mean, I suppose in terms of shots on goal, um, last night it was, um, I suppose, two and two. So, you know, we matched them in that regard. Um, like, going forward, I think... Really, I suppose it's always going to be on the break against um, a team like the, the US, who are going to always dominate possession. And um, I think really it's when they're when they're up the field um, for set pieces, that's when we can really um, counter attack and look to use um, the pace. I think, um, especially on the wings with Katie and Heather, I think they're a really big threat, especially with teams like the US who like to push their fullbacks forward. That's where the space is out wide, and um, we did create. Uh, bits of chances few chances I suppose um, so from that point of view it was a little bit more positive but you're always going to be so limited um, you know in chances especially from play uh, and against teams like this so it's set pieces really is where we can try try to make it matter What did you think of that changing of tactics from Vera Powell because like I don't know how long people have been talking about the fact that they want, you know, to see, it, like, is it possible for Ireland to, to do something other than a low block to utilise Heather Payne in a different way rather than that, you know, her being the lone striker up top and running the absolute length of the pitch multiple times, but actually not getting any opportunity to score. And obviously we saw Kira Carusa kind of filling in that role over this international window and Heather going into that wing role. Do you think that's something that Vera Power is going to persist with? Like, was there enough benefit that we got from it that this is actually something that we can implement in the World Cup? Yeah, personally, I think I think so. I think um, Heather is, is definitely um, suited to the wing. Um, I mean, I um, would have known her. She, she played at Salt and Devon, the same club as I did back in the day. And, um, you know, she always would have operated predominantly as a winger and wouldn't be known for a goal scoring. Um, Bill, she's just so... Um, you know, prominent and assistant and everything that I think that's where she, she could be best utilised for sure. And even I was watching, I was listening to the, the American feed last night and they did, um, you know, say that she nearly burned her a, a side on, on the, the length of the pitch, um, you know, but then I suppose in turn with her using so much energy going forward, then the US also used it. Uh, I think Sophia Smith was out there um, at some stages, you know, just using her pace as well to get by. But um, yeah, I think definitely in, in an out wide position is is where she's suited. And it was interesting to see Kira Caruso seem to be now the preferred option. Um, I suppose before this camp, maybe we would have thought uh, Amber Barrett would have been in with a shout up there as well. Um, you know, she only she got very limited game time over the course of the two games. So um, it is interesting to see how, I suppose, different players have, have been preferred in different positions now going forward with a view to the World Cup in mind. It's interesting you bring up Amber Barrett there because she had that in, that shoulder injury and then when she was over in Germany for a little bit she was playing in a full back position as she was like trying to get more game time coming and like it was quite a serious injury it kept her out for a couple of months and when she was talking heading into this camp she was saying one of the things that she really wanted to do was get some minutes and obviously she didn't I think she came on around 85 minutes last night so only played about five minutes and um, plus whatever extra time there was like would for a player like her what's the concern level do you think now because obviously she gave us that magical moment against Scotland but even she herself has said since that like that's absolutely no guarantee and now that 
Vera Powell seems to be favouring, you know, having Carusa up there with Shiva and Farrelly providing the support into her and like playing those balls in. That's not really Amber Barrett's style of play. Is is that something that's going to be a concern for her over the next couple of months? Yeah, I suppose. Um, although it's still like I know we're just less now than a hundred days out. There's still um, two games to be played. You know, Zambia and France, and we can see that a lot actually has changed. You know, even you look at it in terms of Lucy Quinn, who who wasn't um, initially in the squad, and then la- and last night started. So it's player of the match of, as well um, on the RT. Yeah, feed. actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you know, I don't think anyone really would have predicted that. I, I don't know. I suppose it's uh, it's just an intriguing one, really, how someone can't like be named in the initial squad and then go on to to start and, like you said, be player of the match, which is great for for Lucy going forward as well. But um, yeah, going back to your question in terms of Amber, I think like that anything can change, and if you know she hits a run of form now with her club that's all she can focus on obviously is her um, game time with the club and try try to perform as best she can there like every player really in the squad um, that's what they're going to be, be looking to, to focus on um, between now and I think it's the 22nd of June when they, they face Zambia next so um, yeah like I said a lot can change in the course of a very short amount of time Are you suggesting Kathleen she might not make the squad? Uh, I I don't think she's a certainty by any stretch, especially with the way that Vera was setting up her team in this particular window and the fact that she's not getting a whole lot of game time in Germany. Now, I say that Vera always used to be very big on game time and players getting it, and then we see players like Sinead Farrelly coming in and other players in the squad who haven't had a lot of game time. Um, But yeah, like I... It's entirely possible at this stage. I think there's a lot of positions up for grabs. I was looking at my last edition of Power Rankings that I did during the last international window and there was quite a few movers and shakers. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of like what Maeve says. There is still a bit of time and we do still have those games, but I would, I would be a little worried if I was Amber Barr at the moment, yeah. Is it concerning at all, Maeve, that, that you know we really only thre- started to threaten last night when Louise Quinn is, is lumped up top? Like, I know it's probably preparation almost for... You know, if you are a goal or two down in a World Cup match, you can utilize that option. But is that a is that a break glass in case of emergency kind of option? Do you think? Yeah, it's it's an option definitely, and yeah, like I said, she went up front again last night, and I think um, you know, really from set pieces, I think yeah, Louise is definitely is, is such a threat. But on the flip side, then, and we saw it once, I think around the hour mark last night, the US they're so. Um, dangerous on the break like all the top teams nations are so when we've players committed forward and you know the likes of Louise who in fairness almost always gets her head to the ball she's going to be one of the most furthest forward and then you know on the flip side like I said then when they counter attack we're looking uh, for her to chase the length of the pitch so I suppose what I'm saying is if we could have two Louise Quinns, it could be come in handy, you know, especially towards the end of a game. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's an option to have, but yeah, it's a last resort really as well. But um, like I said, if, if we can really make the set pieces count, um, that's that's where I think we'll be a real threat to teams. And like the US as well last night set up and um, the game before set up with a zonal defence. So I think from their point of view, they they might be looking at that because um, they definitely looked vulnerable um, from that point of view. Maeve, what's your expectation of how well we're going to get on at the World Cup now that it's like five months away? I, I wouldn't be lying Sorry. if I'd say I'm Four already... And yeah, I'm up. yeah, true, yeah. So I think it's 99 days out uh, as far as I know. But um, I kind of already looked at the permutations and that and... Uh, I think uh, you know a second round uh, matchup against England would be would be uh, pretty spicy to say the least. Would be unreal if uh, we could manage to to somehow you know get through to, to that round. That would be be fantastic. For, I think if we were to finish second and England were to top their group, we'd, we'd face up against each other, which uh, would be Mount Water really. Um, but yeah, I think like I suppose that the games are they're they're hard to predict because um, actually yesterday. Um, Australia beat England 2-0 and I mean that's definitely not one that could have been predicted either um, and I think um, Canada lost to France as far as I know and, and Nigeria beat New Zealand as well so um, it's definitely going to be a very interesting group I think like in every tournament getting something out of the first game is massive so I really think if we could even you know get a point against Australia in what will be um, you know, a very tough tough opening game especially with the fans but 
as we know, there's so many Irish down under as well. It, it could, you know, it could work in our in Ireland's favour too. But I think if we got something out of the first game, then who knows after that, you know. Um, but obviously Canada and Nigeria are, are both going to be very tough games as well. Kathleen was making the point earlier, May, that, that Ireland certainly seemed to tire a little bit in the second half last night. And when you look at the list of names that are coming, coming off the bench for, for the USA, uh, Julie Ertz, Trinity Rodman, Ashley Hatch, it's c- encouraging enough that a tiring Ireland still managed to, to nullify their impact and, and kind of deal with them. Like a 1-0 isn't bad. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think um, from the US point of view, they could be slightly worried, to be honest, because like... Um, you know, from their point of view, Ireland should be a team that, that they should be beating and beating well, you know. Um, if they are, like, they go into every tournament with the expectation to win and this World Cup would be no different. They're going to be going for three in a row, which would be an incredible achievement. But I don't think, at the, judging off, off the game um, yesterday, I don't think, you know, it's it's much... Um, they have they have a long way to go, basically, I suppose is what I'm saying. But, um, but yeah, from an Irish perspective, um, just to be able to, to, to remain solid and limit their opportunities to, yeah, two shots on goal. Um, and like I said, that, you know, uh, I suppose a preventable goal as well. Uh, a draw was a realistic result um, given by, based on the performance. So, yeah, it's really, it is reassuring that we can kind of, um, you know, uh, limit limit their opportunities. But I suppose the only worry would be that if, if we, do go a goal down and in a tournament situation then you're going to have to go and um, try to chase the game a bit more you know last night I think you could see Vera Pau almost asking for the full time whistle which you know obviously 1-0 they would have taken it before the game but um, you know it's just that extra step now uh, going forward in, in, in the World Cup because you know uh, one nil losses, you know, is still um, no points gained so um, it's just a matter of that then can we we know now, I suppose, that we're able to defend and defend, defend well, but it's whether we can kind of add goals then if, if they're needed. Can I ask you, as somebody who's been involved in squads, um, what, the, what the knock-on impact of somebody joining the team at this stage and getting straight into the team and somebody who's been a hero of the campaign not being on the plane, do the players care ultimately when they get to the World Cup? Is it a, a conversation for a day or two and then they get there and actually, you know what, it's all business? Or... Is that the type of thing that could cause some rancor? Yeah, I mean, uh, I suppose like I said previously, the girls who who are still on the plane with the other girls, um, they probably don't, you know, won't mind as much. I I, I think at this stage there's going to be a bit of a Mayfainer attitude towards it because all the girls individually want to be on that plane, and um, you know, like it really is the girls who, who miss out who are going to be the ones who will be thinking about it and thinking about it for a long time. I'm sure as they watch on uh, the games but yeah those within the squad and those who have made it um, I don't think they'll be, be too worried um, you know from the, from their own side once they're the ones who are um, on the plane as well Alright Is there something further to that point though in that the squad have say I don't know a player like Kira Grant who's been involved in like every single squad of the qualifying campaign maybe hasn't got a whole lot of minutes and now is very much like she she said during this time in the US that you know she's talked to Vera about what her role is in the team and she's aware of it but also her position is one of the ones that is probably up for grabs at the moment and is pretty you know that midfield is pretty packed and she could very easily not make the plate like surely there would be some yeah, especially with someone like and again this is not. She, she's just an easy player to pick out. But Sinead Farley coming in only played sixty minutes. Has only ever trained with the team three times. She played great on Saturday, and like, I mean, if she goes to the World Cup and does a job for us, I don't think I will be complaining. But I just wonder in the squad, you know, she's a midfielder too. Is there that little bit of a if you're trying to gel? Yeah, group, I mean, that's the thing. I'm sure there has to be friction. Like, I mean, that, that's understandable because if there's a player coming in and, and you can see directly that that she's the one that's going to or could potentially take her position or even you compare it to the likes of Jamie Finn who's, who had been predominantly a starter or at least getting a lot of game time throughout the campaign and, um, you know, she she's kind of gone down the pecking order now as well with the new recruits in. Um, you know, like I said, um, Sinead Farley and, and the likes of Eva Mannion as well. And, you know, in fact, like last night, they were, the two of them were arrested as such, you know, so I suppose that would indicate that they are seen to be 
um, important players going forward. Um, if you're already trying to, you know, you're obviously injury prevention and, and that. So, yeah, there. I, I'd imagine, you know, um, when it comes to on the pitch, that I, you know, I'm sure all the intensity of training sessions and everything is is up to the max because, um, you know, it's such fine lines. It's like that. If they do one thing right or one thing wrong, it could cost them the place. Um, either to go or not go to the, the yeah. World Cup. So. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, a lot of pressure Maeve good stuff thanks a million for joining us cheers cheers thanks guys it's Maeve de Berke giving us some thoughts on the Republic of Ireland 1-0 defeat against the United States uh, overnight